right guys, so behind me is that building you just saw. Super weird experience for me and them. I showed up to like the main office building. They've got a couple of like branch stores around Tokyo, I wanna say like seven, and that's, that's just like where the office building is. And that's, I guess, where, you know, they put the ads up on Rakuten. And, and so there were people in there in t-shirts uh, unboxing things. And, and, uh, and I guess you can make an appointment to go and sell your stuff. And that, they had like a little cubicle where they sat me. And I guess if you're getting ready to sell something, that's where they would sit you. And they, they had like a scale there in water. Really weird. I guess that's the measure out precious metals and so she asked me what I was looking for wrote down the model number the price which I didn't really want to tell her because uh, I kind of want to bargain right on that um, and anyway she she looked it up and then printed out where I should go so I've got to go to Shibuya actually Yamanote line and this is uh, track number two and the Yamanote line pretty much does a circle around Tokyo Shibuya, that's where I'm going I was going in the opposite direction a Koas with some uh, rice balls or a uh, drink for the trip. Do I need a beer to calm my nerves? Probably not. There we go. guys I got I got to find some place to talk about this oh my gosh uh, did I dodge a bullet or what all right guys um, all right so I'm walking around with thousands in cash I was almost certain I was gonna pull the trigger in fact so much so that I almost wanted to get it on Rakuten if I had done that I could get Raku 10 points, but I'd have to get my wife to help me out with that because my credit card doesn't go that high. So uh, I didn't want to do that. So that's why I came here. And man, I'm glad I did because we're talking sketchy, guys. Okay, first of all, what's the piece I'm talking about? It's a, an Explorer 2 Polar G Serial. They came out in 2010 and you know, it, it's not the last, last, last of the Explorer 2. Those would be the kind of rare, random dialed Explorer 2s. But on some of the G serials, you have what's called the thin frame dial, and the circular indices are thinner. And this was box papers, like $1,000 less than another G serial here with a thin frame dial. Of course, it's got the 3186 movement, the engraved rehot and it would just I thought it would be cool as sort of a, a, a companion piece for my uh, current Explorer 2 because of the different elements and especially the thin frame dial I thought that was really cool oh my god uh, all right well it started with dust on the dial a debris there's a hair at the 21 Thank God for my loot, man. Paul Thorpe is right. Wow. Uh, you know, I knew this was a thin frame dial watch, unlike that stick dial that I went to Osaka to see. So I thought I should just order it. It's easier. I mean, I, I know I'm going to get what I want. It's fine. No, no. Um, okay, let me continue. Let me continue. So... The dial it didn't have a glossy finish. It 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 was um, 
it, it was almost like the surface was uh, bumpy, all right? And here's, the, here's a big one. The, the Rolex logo, all right, the L and the E at the bottom, it's like they were printed twice. So there was like a shadow. It looked like a drop shadow. Like, I can't really do it, but imagine if this is the, this is like part of the letter and then another part of the letter was there. You, you couldn't see it without the loop. And then the coronet was not fully black. The outlines were sketchy. In fact, each of the five spires on the coronet, it looked like somebody had taken a racer to it. Or, or I guess you would say it looked like the printer had run out of ink is what it looked like the the minute hands were off i don't know it, the, it's almost like they were it was a different kind of black than i think they were supposed to look like i don't know if they'd been repainted and the right right in the middle of uh, the hand stack uh it just didn't look you know, I suppose I have that little indentation in the pen. It, that just didn't look all right. Okay, uh, back to the dial. The dial was just so messed up, all right? The loom dots, there were, there were like little black specks in there. And the minute markers were a little jagged. Again, as if, you know, the, the paint was running out I know, I know they're not printed like, you know, on paper, but just, you know how uh, paper looks when, when your printer cartridge gets low? Uh, that's what it looked like. So I don't know if that's just an honest mistake by Rolex or what weirdest style I've ever seen. Totally sketchy. Okay, did it act like a 3186 movement? It, the wind was a little bit weird. It did jump, but it moved around. The jump hour shouldn't really affect the the minute hand much and it, and it did didn't wiggle so i guess you would say it passed the wiggle test maybe it just needed a service but it just didn't feel right wow and, and the card i looked at the card as well and the card looked rough around the edges and to be honest the box did too guys at best i think this was a franken very best at very best well hold on at second very best it uh, had a fake dial, a fake thin frame dial. And I guess first best would be, it was just a hell of an off day for Rolex with that dial. Wow. Um, you know, when I was looking at it at first, I, I just, it was so dirty on the inside, I knew I was like, okay, the moment I get this, I'm gonna have to have a service because I can't live with like a, a little tiny hair on the inside and like little specks of dust. But I don't think that was a real dial, unless just Rolex had the worst day ever, okay? A, a shameful dial. There was nothing that was crisp on it, missing paint all throughout the lettering. I, I can't believe it, and, and the texture of it, it had to be aftermarket. I don't know what's going on in the inside of the watch. I mean, I'm blown away right now because it, it wasn't, you know, at first I was like, um, oh, by the way, it, it had been polished, okay? polished pretty badly and I was like well damn I mean the price is pretty good thin frame dial I could have it repolished through Rolex and I kind of decided then and there nah I don't want it but if the price was really good but didn't want it um, but then once I started seeing those issues with the the dial my god I, I mean what a disaster all right well that was scary all right and disappointing kind of I don't oh, know by the way this Explorer 2 was from Italy and he didn't know how it got there. I guess like somebody had sold it to their, their Kaitori as they say, where, where they buy stuff and wow, what a disappointing dial. I mean, I, mean, I, I pointed, put it out to the guy and asked him and, and he, you know, what do you, what, what is he gonna say? I mean, he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and yeah, like paint's missing and I asked him if it's real and he said, oh, it's, it's real. And I don't know if he was saying like, well, overall it's real, I don't know, but I just kind of wanted to point it out to him. Like, I think you're selling a bum item. All right, anyway, guys, back home. Wow. Uh, All right, guys, it's about 24 hours later. I'm editing the video, just getting ready to upload it. And some final thoughts. I need to stay the hell off Rakuten, number one. Do I really need another 
white dialed Explorer 2. I had some reasons I wanted to get it. Okay, anyway, that's a separate video. But here's the main point I want you to come away with. The loop. You couldn't see what I was talking about, even on the video footage. And in fact, um, my biggest regret is, is not the watch or going into Tokyo to check it out, but it's not taking a still picture because I think I would be able to zoom in and show you guys what I'm talking about. And, and the video footage just doesn't capture it. But here's the thing, the loop is really what saved me. So if you're going to see a watch, you have to have a loop. If you're ordering a watch, when it comes, you have to check it out under a loop. You know, I've been really stubborn about that. I use glasses to see far away, but up close, I can see fine. And I get cocky with watches. You know, I can get really close. I can see all the details, I think. But the fact is, you just miss things. And I... Look, the polishing job on this watch was just too much for me, but the dial, um, if I didn't have that loop, I might have walked out of that shop with it. And I would have come home and I would have gotten out the loop and looked at it, and man, I'd be in a panic today. And I can't just stress enough how important a loop is because without it, you just can't see those details that you need to see. So... If you've learned nothing else, learn how important a loop is because I did yesterday. Thanks for watching. Take care. Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.